discussing the topics. I'm presenting on behalf of Kimir Solutions, a startup where we are solving real life problems using AI software architectural design and data science tools. We partnered with Omnet++ team and the story of our collaboration will be the topic for today's presentation, which is the inference of packet error rates using SNR patterns via neural networks. So a bit of a backstory, just to get into picture how we started this collaboration. So long story short, at the 2020 Omnet++ Summit, uh, there was a proposal, which I was just copy pasted here from the slides, so at the end of their presentation, they said that, uh, what about the future uh, uh, of their project? And they said they claimed that someone knowledgeable about neural networks could produce great results in a short time. And then years passed, and finally a few weeks earlier, we met uh, on Upwork, because we are also present there uh, uh, as an agency, and the rest is uh, history, and we're going to discuss this today. So what is our problem statement for today and what is our main goal uh, in this project and in this presentation? So we basically only wanted to improve the speed of their current Wi-Fi error models while we also maintaining the baseline accuracy uh, for the neural network. I'm going to talk about in more detail what is this baseline accuracy in all of these uh, definitions, what you can see here in this next slide. So what are these SNRs, what are an error model, what are P, what is PER exactly? So first of all, SNR, which is going to be our input for today's presentation and in this project was, it's commonly used in wireless communication as a way to measure the quality of wireless connections. An error model, what we are enhancing today basically, it describes how the SNR affects the amount of errors at the receiver. And packet error rate, which is going to be our output, is used to test the performance of a receiver. PR is the ratio in percent of the number of test packets not successfully, so not successfully received by the receiver. So this is our uh, definitions, which we're going to work with. And this is uh, the models which were previously used or uh, still is, uh, is being used by Omnet++ uh, uh, ecosystem. So, I also outlined these in colors, and these are going to be colored the same way during uh, throughout the whole presentation. So there's the scalar radio model, which is using analytical formulas. It's based on just single SNR values, more about SNR uh, patterns and SNRs uh, later. It's fast, but it's still inaccurate. So it's fast, but inaccurate model. And there is the layered radio model, which is going to be acting as a baseline in this presentation because we're lacking of empirical data. We don't have uh, measurements from, from real life Wi-Fi networks uh, uh, messaging back and forth. So that's why we're going to use this layered radio model as a baseline, which is a simulation still. So it's based on the whole SNR pattern. It's kind of quite slow, but it can be trusted as a baseline measurement. And then this is our neural network approach, what, we're going, what I'm going to present here today which is, can be good because it can be quite accurate, it can achieve very fast inference speeds, can generalize for different Wi-Fi modes, uh, maybe in the future, and can take into account the whole SNR patterns by design, because neural networks are really good in high dimensional data recognition as we know it. So this is uh, basically the outline of the pipeline that we are using here. So we have this layered radio model, which is acting as a baseline, as I said, still the color is important. We're training the data set. We're using pairs of data, which is the SNR patterns and packet error values. So this is the input and this is the output. That, that's how we're training the neural network. We're, of course, splitting the data to training, testing, and validation sets as usual. We're creating a neural network. We're training it. We're exporting the network weights. And then we're doing some magic to use it uh, in the existing OMNET++ pipeline. And this pipeline was also proposed in that 2020 summit. I just uh, uh, put it here, basically. So again, what is our motivation here? Is basically a trade-off. So we have this horizontal axis, which is the computational time for the simulations. And this is accuracy, so to say, in a hand-waving uh, uh, manner, because accuracy here is not a general accuracy what you would refer to 
but how close can you get to the layer radio model? Because that's the etalon here uh, in our case, because we don't have empirical data. So the scalar radio model is quite fast, but it's 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 far from the accuracy of the layered radio model. And the layered radio model is is pretty accurate, of course. That's that, that's the baseline, but the computational time is quite a lot. So we want a neural network, and this is the basically the, the bottom line of this whole presentation, which is very very close to the layered radio model, but it can achieve very close. Uh, computational times as the scalar radio model can. So this is the trade off. It's, it's the most important thing that I can tell you today. So in our opinion, every data science project should start with data exploration, getting familiar with the data, interpreting the data, understanding it, cleaning, reinterpreting it, or even re-representing it if necessary. So what you can see here is the raw data, what we fed into the neural network. So this, it's a tabular data, of course, and there are packet error values, which is the output. There's time division and frequency division. I'm going to talk about here later what is that exactly, and these NER values. So this is going to be, uh, so these NER values can be packed into time division and frequency division domains, and we can create this time division by frequency division image-like data. What you can see here, again, I just copy pasted it from the previous, uh, so or the 2020 summit. And this, this is basically like an image, what you can see here. We, we're going to then, then fed it to the neural network, it's going to do its black magic, and it infers that single float value, which is from uh, zero to one, uh, acting as a pseudo, uh, um, probability or a, a like a percentage, which is the packet error rate. So this is the basic pipeline here. So we're still in the data exploration phase. Imagine this schematic figure represented in real uh, data. So this is the, again the SNR pattern as I'm referring to with frequency and time division plotted in a 3D plot. Here is a conjecture for you. So if humans can recognize relationships between packet error values and these SNR patterns, there is a great chance that neural networks can do also and even doing it better. So what you can see here is different SNR patterns which have a corresponding different and increasing packet error rate. So here, if that, what you can see in this cluster, if the packet error rate is small, so it's close to zero, you see that the data is quite homogeneous. That, that, that's the bottom line. This is our conjecture here. But as you can see, if it's increasing, you, you see increasing in homogeneity in these errors in the data. And this is what also, in our opinion, humans can see, but of course, neural networks can do it even better. But I'm not somebody who you have to trust, so you, you can try it for yourself. So therefore, these slides are uh, shared on the on the on the Omnet Plus uh, Plus Summit's uh, website. So you can try it for yourself. We created an interactive column notebook where you can try to guess these uh, SNR patterns with the corresponding packet error rates for yourself. And we even created an interactive 3D clustering demo where you can go through like an art gallery and see the data for yourself. So what are the methods what we tried? So it's straight, straightforward when you're thinking about this SNR pattern as an image to try convolutional neural networks because they are the state of the art uh, methods for image type data recognition. So our expectations was that it's going to be compatible with different input sizes because convolutional neural nets don't have to be inputted um, fixed size data because it's really important that in our case the input is going to be varying in size so it's not going to be fixed uh, it's excellent in image like pattern recognition it has a limitation although that uh, convolutional neural networks especially shallow ones which are not very deep in in layers which have which don't have that many layers are limited to long-range interactions in the data uh, what I mean by that, we're going to talk about in another slide. And in reality, we, we realized that it's in this particular case, it was not that efficient. We, we couldn't achieve uh, great results what we wanted to. 
So if you remember, I, I referred to the data that is going to be uh, an input data, which which varying in size, at least in time division. It, 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 has, it can have different uh, sizes. So first of all, we didn't know that, so we tried XGBoost, which is the state-of-the-art uh, um, method uh, in tabular data inference. But then we realized that the data is not going to be, the input data is not going to be fixed. It just went straight to the dumpster because XGBoost is only cap uh, compatible with the fixed size input data. And then we, uh, we, we converged to the idea of LSTMs, which is quite funny because it was independent from our site. But when we dig deeper into the 2020 Summit's presentation by Omnet++ team, they also referred that uh, LSTMs might be good. So it, it, it's quite a funny uh, uh, story. And uh, bottom line, all of our expectations were fulfilled with this type of uh, neural networks because it can recognize long-range interactions in the data. And long-range interactions in this case means that there are uh, a lot of different SNR patterns. And inside the SNR pattern, you can get the, the connection between this corner of the data and that corner of the data. With shallow CNNs, it's not that easy to, to achieve if, if it's even possible to do. So that's the biggest advantage about LSTMs and also because they can sense the sequentiality in the data. There is also a limitation, but it's not, not that important in this case because we created a very uh, lightweight network, which is fast, what, what, what it should have, uh, should have been. That uh, it, it has longer training times due to more sequential structure of the network. So this is, I know, a crowded uh, slide, but here I just outlined if anybody's interested about the exact, uh, so it's an open source project. So, so there is everything what you need to, 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 uh, to, to reproduce all these results. But bottom line is that this model is lightweight and fast. It can, you can input uh, a data which is varying in time division. Also in the data, the frequency division was quite fixed. And you can also input batched inputs, which means that uh, you, can, you can input to the, to the neural network more than one uh, input data uh, at once. So I'm getting back to this conjecture, which is why LSTMs are, are better than CNNs. And I just give it to you as a sort of homework if you are interested, because I outlined here two very, very interesting articles which are getting deep into this field and to this, this intuition and this, this conjecture why uh, LSTMs are better in long-range interaction recognition than CNNs. And here there's an especially interesting article which is about the, the long-range interaction study of amino acid uh, inference. Because as you, can, as you may know that uh, proteins are, are made out of amino acids and the amino acid sequence is basically coding the 3D structure of a protein. Of course, now, nowadays transformers are much better in this, uh, in this uh, topic, but I still recommend to read it if, you, if you're interested in this kind of stuff. So after we created this uh, neural network and we trained it and we exported the weights, there's still some work that had to be done. And this was done by Omnet++ team, so this is our, not our results. But we, we created this, this box here, which we, we implemented in Python and Keras. We exported the Keras weights and did this incredibly useful, I, I highly recommend to check out this frugality uh, um, package or, or, or library, where you can export uh, these weights and use these neural networks in a limited way in C++. So therefore, it was co uh, compatible with the existing Omnet++ pipeline. So it's, it's a really good thing. And finally, we are here at the results sections. So we did our usual stuff. We trained the data on approximately 160,000 lines of data. Of course, we split it into training, testing, and validation sets. Uh, the, the input was basically the batch size times the time division times the frequency division of the SNR patterns, and we uh, measure the accuracy of the model. And what we found, what you can see on the uh, left-hand side, 
my monitor is trying to, to switch off <laughs> meantime. So there is the target and predicted value distributions. And by eye, you can tell they are very uh, close to each other, so in the in good agreement. But of course, more rigorously, we also plotted the, the predicted values of the, of the PERs, of the uh, packet error rates, in the function of the target values, which is this correlation type of plotting. And what you can see is the correlation is quite high. It's uh, close to 0.99. And the root mean squared error, which is also a, a typical measure in these cases, is 0.06. So it's, it's quite good, I, I, I have to admit here. Um, Wi-Fi error models are all about noise. So we compare the results to the baseline under various parameters and conditions. There are several simulation parameters which can be tuned within the layered radio model. So the layered radio model, again, this is the baseline, what we are trained the model with, our neural network approach, and we're also highlighting here the scalar radio model. So what you can see here is that there are different parameters. There is a noise duration, a noise power, a number of noise sources here in the horizontal axis, and also, there is an output here in the, in the vertical axis. You can see here the received packets. So in this case, what you see a trend, if you're increasing the noise, where we created this noise metric, which is basically, we just multiply the noise duration, the noise power, and the, noise or the number of noise sources, which is going to be a microsecond times milliwatt uh, dimensional quantity. So we increase the noise, and what you can see that, of course, the received packets by the receiver is, is, is diminishing because the noise is increasing. That's, that makes sense. But what is more important, and why I plotted it here for you, is that you can see that the neural network approach is following quite nicely and in really good agreement, uh, especially with this, uh, with this trend, which is coming out from a, a complex parameter variations. So it, it's, it's quite nice to see these kind of results. The other important aspect is, of course, computational time. So in the previous slide, you could see that under a lot of parameters, our model is quite in a good agreement with the layered radio model. But what about computational time? So if you increase the message length of the packets, so the packets are what the receiver is receiving. These are messages. And we can measure the sizes of them in bytes, which is the message length here. And then in the vertical axis, you see the runtime. And what you can see that the neural network approach is much closer to the scalar radio model with regarding of computational time, of course, than to the baseline model. So basically, our two, so, so the trade off is basically fulfilled here. I also highlighted here two heat maps. Uh, where I basically just gathered into a, 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 a heat map all of this information for you to see it at once. So this is this large parameter space where, which is plotted in uh, message length and this noise metric, which is again the, the metric of the noise. And here I just uh, plotted the difference in packet errors between the layered radio model and the neural network. So basically just just what the differences in uh, regarding these uh, two, two uh, approaches values. And what you can see is that it's quite in a good agreement because here even the, 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 the ex extreme colors are just 10 percentage. So most of the, the, the range is about close to zero. So it's quite close to each other. But more importantly, again, this same similar plot where again, message length length and noise metric in the function of message length and noise metric, we plotted what was the speed up of the neural network because we plotted the ratio between the computational time of the layered radio model over the computational time of the neural network approach. And what you can see is that it can be orders of magnitude uh, uh, faster because if you increase the message length, you can reach even more than 12x speed up with the neural network approach. So again, what I outlined here in the first few slides, our trade-off is basically fulfilled successfully. So what are our conclusions for today? 
These novel neural network approaches in agreement with the layered radio model baseline, by the significant speed up in computational time, especially when the packet length is large. With the frugally deep environment, our Keras Python implementation is compatible to the existing Omna Plus Plus ecosystem, making this project potentially valuable for future studies and relevant use cases. In the future, we are planning to continue the collaboration and expand our model to generalize to multiple Wi-Fi modes. As for now, it is only compatible with a single specific mode, but I think we can figure out a, a good solution for it. So these are the tools we used. I'm more than happy to provide these if uh, anybody like. Uh, I forgot to, to put links here. And thank you for your attention. If you liked our approach to this project, consider checking out our website, socials, and maybe even contacting us. If you have any data science, computer vision, or regular programming related problem, we are more than happy to help you. And thank you again for this wonderful opportunity. Are there any questions, maybe? I'm happy to answer them. Maybe the food is doing its job <laughs> <laughs> as yesterday. <laughs> yeah. But it's nice because maybe it was that clear. <laughs> yeah, everything Hopefully. was clear. But it was. I don't have a question, but I have to say this was pretty amazing. <laughs> congrats well, to you. your work. No, I think it's a collaboration, so congrats to the whole team as well, because we really like the dynamics uh, of our collaboration, how we could communicate. It was intriguing for us as well. So thank you again. Really appreciate it. Yeah, just w one comment that... Uh, sure. With time, we would like to uh, to integrate this neural network-based solution into the INS framework as well. So we will find that. So after we have uh, neural networks trained, we will find a small uh, C++ library for uh, for neural networks, and we will make it part of the INET framework. And you will be able to 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 select a neural network-based error model for Wi-Fi simulations. And, and uh, well, the details are we're still figuring out. Like this, in this study, it was one particular Wi-Fi mode that was yeah. learned by the neural network. But there are like several dozens of Wi-Fi modes, so we'll have to figure out whether between the two extremes, like one one separate neural network for each mode or like one neural network would learn all the <laughs> all the yeah. wi-fi modes we'll probably have to find some compromise between the two yeah we will have quite we'll have a few neural networks oh. and um like we made some we, we expect that like the, the size of this neural network weights will be around like one megabyte a few hundred kilobytes yeah. So, we'll, so, so this will mean uh, a number of data files checked into, into INET. And uh, yes, so I hope it will it will catch on with the community because there's there's some concerns that uh, neural networks, neural network based solutions are estimations. But yeah, and then this is of course true. But on the other hand, you have to to see that. Uh, those uh, those scalar models that you find error models that you find in textbooks those are even bigger approximations yeah, yeah as we could see exactly and i hope we could i hope we could prove Especially that uh, yes that these neural network based solutions are actually much more precise much more precise than than the the usual usual ones that the simulation community just accepts as de facto error models like, yeah. not to speak yeah. of the fact that there are no no well-known error models for more developed wi-fi uh, releases like that like in 11 n or ac or ax there is no there are no formulas <laughs> at all yeah. so yeah. Yeah. The neural network will be the only uh, only only error model to simulate these wi-fi modes accurately or you go with the layered model which basically does 
simulates the whole transmission. So it's 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 it does does all the all the forward error encoding and the scrambling and uh, trans and the uh, creating of the symbols and then applying the the noise on the symbols and then then create then computing the uh, the uh, the new the output of decoding the symbols and then the reverse process reverse again so it's 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 very very slow so actually if the neural network is able to to deliver almost the same almost the same performance uh, almost the same accuracy with yeah. much better performance than i think it should be accepted yeah, we are we are more than happy to uh, if you get the opportunity to fade away this type of concerns about neural networks so if we are here and we, we are really open to collaboration any type of uh, yeah, data science related jobs because that's our life we really love to do it it's our passion as well so i'm i'm just glad to do yeah. it together but you can present it in a way that we figured out a very complex formula to uh, yeah. calculate the error well it's a big matrix but well <laughs> yes exactly exactly yeah we have a big analytical yeah. not an analytical <laughs> formula <laughs> yeah thank you again i think uh, the next presenter is going to uh, approach our is there any further presentations sure it will be me <laughs> oh okay nice nice okay thank you again if okay. there's no other thanks. questions thanks thanks thank you